Hi, this is Charlie Montefiello with another video on Native American flute making. Today's video is an additional flute totem video. Those last couple we've made seem to have gone over pretty well, so we're making another video on how to make a Native American flute flute totem. And for those of you who don't know what a totem is, basically you have a flute like this, and without a little piece up here, it doesn't make a sound. But Indian people back in the day had carved several different types of designs um, that uh, sat on that little area and when you put one of them on there it makes a sound. So, description of what a flute totem is, check. Anyway, so a lot of people call them the bird or a block or a fetish and uh, though some of us don't use some of those words um, we try to call it whatever we can to communicate with one another. Today's flute totem is going to be one off of our list uh, that I've got kind of a list of custom totems that people want me to make and show how to make. And uh, of all these totems that we have, uh, there's several of them that are really wild looking. I know I've read the list in the past, but it's a hummingbird, a fox, an eagle, a cougar, a horse totem, which is one of our favorites, turtle totem, one of my personal, personal best and personal favorites, and the uh, leaping deer. Bigfoot. Now, some of you might think, why would you want a Bigfoot totem? Well, Bigfoot is certainly uh, somewhat in Native American history that we know of anyway, uh, if not anything else than recent history, to say the least. And I'm sure we're going to get a lot of tags on this is Bigfoot Indian history, you know, 101. But uh, anyway, so we have a salmon, which is another good totem to make, and a kangaroo, which would not be the first uh, unusual outside of the Americas animal that we've created, of course. So, today's totem is going to be the eagle, which is a very simple one to make. Anyone can do this probably with just simple carving tools. Um, however, we'll, uh, we'll do it the way that we make our eagles for you know, all of our flutes, so that you can see what the process is to, to make an actual flute totem um, that goes on our flutes and in the time frame and everything. I mean, it might make you appreciate what it takes to, to do this. Uh, so if you would, come a little closer and take a look at what we're doing. Okay, so here you can see one of the flute pattern papers that we have. And this flute pattern paper is just a silhouette of an eagle or a hawk that I have printed out. I think this one's an eagle. However, birds of prey, many of them look like one another. Uh, an ornithologist might would say, well, you can tell by the rounded and pointed uh, head area here that it's probably a falcon. You know, I think maybe a falcon head and a hawk wings, a eagle frame, who knows. Anyway, it's a good good design. I like it a lot. It makes a beautiful um, design if you just print the sucker out. What you want to do is use some carbon paper behind it, and you can uh, take your carbon paper, put it on your piece of wood that you're going to use, put this down, trace it out, and take the two pieces of paper and carbon paper off. and and you've got a design for an eagle there on a piece of wood that you can cut out with either a saw or even with just a knife. Um, so that's one method. In the shop here we of course make a lot of eagle totems so I have an eagle design that is just a little like a stencil that we use. Uh, if you'll notice, I don't know if you can if you can see, but uh, his wings are a little undersided. There's a reason for that. Sometimes we might need to make one a little thicker, sometimes a little thinner, and it's symmetrical so we can flip it over and make the duplicate of the other side if we need to. There's a lot of conveniences in having a stencil. You can make them all exactly the same side, in which case you just go back and retrace over with a carbon paper and make it identical. Otherwise, the carbon paper is, you know, a good method as well. And for a totem that we only make once in a while, that's what we usually do for something that we make regularly. This is where we go here. So if you'll take a look as I trace, I'm just going to follow the line there. I'm not even going to draw the whole bottom part of his tail feather. And then if you want to make sure that his wings are symmetrical, you can always flip them over and kind of trace out again. But I have done this for so long that <laughs> we use it as a pattern. One day we'll probably get rid of this guy and go back to just using a symmetrical sided um, because I usually cut these out the way that they, they should be. Anyway, so let's go over to the saw and get started from there.
so the rest of this I'll do with the sander. Um, and I noticed that, you know, there's a lot of things I forget to tell you guys. Um, there are procedures that you really need to, to follow. You need to wear goggles. Um, number one, if you're not safe or consider yourself to be safe with a saw like this or haven't had the experience with it yet, this is not the time to start. Um, if this is something you're accustomed to using, then certainly go ahead and go for it. Otherwise, all of this can be achieved with things as simple as a coping saw, uh, a, uh, a knife, like I've mentioned several times. Uh, there's a lot of ways to achieve what it is we're trying to get here. I just use this saw, and I absolutely do not recommend using one. Well, I don't recommend using a saw at all because it's dangerous and can cut you. If you don't believe me, I've done it before. Um, anyway, having said that, uh, there is a guard here for a reason. This thing keeps your wood from jumping up, as you've probably seen my uh, piece of wood jump up there. It was probably excited for that email that just popped up. Anyway, um, so you should always set your, gu your guides and your guards as they need to be. Uh, I even recommend using like a, a push stick whenever your fingers come close to something like this just to save yourself the pain and frustration of getting hurt. Please don't get hurt. Don't use this kind of equipment. Uh, if you're going to use it anyway, then just please be absolutely careful as you possibly can. Uh, so let's go ahead and sand this guy down and see where it takes us. Okay, so I'm just going to sand this guy down a little bit first. However, as you'll notice, um, though you may not see it in the scene or during the scene, I'm usually dressed for success. <laughs> so uh, the sawdust coming off of this guy without my dust collector on can be quite a lot. And uh, using a belt sander to do this kind of thing, you're going to put out a lot of sawdust. So um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and sand him down, wear my mask, and make sure that I, uh, I do a good job here without you know hurting myself. It's very important that you don't allow this kind of thing to to you know, make your life less when you're trying to make your life more. So. enough we're going to go ahead and just shape this guy up a tiny bit keeping in mind we're going to leave his wings facing upward <music> sandpaper here to do the rest. Don't think that you have to um, do anything exactly like I do. There are probably better ways to do it than the way that I do it. This is just the way that I do it. Eventually, doing this kind of thing for long enough, you may develop your own techniques and what have you, and probably will find someone down the road that does them better than you do. It's okay. It's part of life. It doesn't mean you have to stop doing it. <laughs> Just because you do it better doesn't mean you make as many. <laughs> but 
Oh my gosh. The amount of flutes. So, there are so many procedures that you can follow here. And, you know, each person has their own individual goals and interests. You know, we like to make a very outstanding flute that is very affordable. And there are, you know, give and takes in that. You have to follow you have to follow what it is that you want to do. Some people would say follow your heart, but you have to go through the procedure the way that you want to do it. And that's what's going to keep you going in the right direction. Okay. We are so close to done with this little fella. And I think I'm pretty happy with him. I don't normally, as I said, make the eagle with his wings going upward. They do fly like that. That doesn't mean that, that uh, you know, that I have to do it, though. I like them with their wings going the other direction. You ever think that maybe there's some eagle out there on some other distant world making his own flute totems, putting little people blocks on and saying, do you see how they swing their hands this way? Uh, yep, my ideas I have sometimes. Well, I think that's got him. Let's go over and drill and put the block on it. So here is the little piece that I made for the, the flute bottom part of the totem. I'm going to go ahead and sit him down for just a second. And remembering that we're going to leave his wings going upward, we're going to turn this guy upside down like so. And we're going to drill into the center of him. Not too deep because you don't want it to come out this side. Just enough that we can inset a piece of wood into his body there and it might need to go just a little deeper. Some people might would say, well what size drill bit are you using? Well that depends on what size dowel you're going to use. So I'm using a 3 8 inch dowel, excuse me, yeah, 3 8 That's a 3 8 inch dowel. It's our standard one we use for our eagle whistles that we make. And I'm just going to put this in about the center as well. I said center, and at that moment I realized that it's just a smidgen too long for our standard flute blocks, so I moved it back just a bit. But you can put it preferably in the center. Uh, however, there may be a reason why you want to put it on the very end. I don't know. It's a, certainly a possibility. We'll go over here and cut this dowel. Here's my little trusty dowel. Watch those fingers. I don't know if any of you noticed or not, but this finger here got really close to the blade. Well, I wasn't using it to put any pressure on the piece of wood. I was actually doing all my cutting with this, and I only used this hand to hold the, the dowel. If something were to happen that it would have slipped, I may have gotten cut. But, once again, practice, practice, practice. I guess I should take this opportunity to say that I'm not asking you to practice. <laughs> I'm just saying I've had a lot of practice with that thing. So a little piece of wood there. There we go. Tiny bit of good old cyan acrylic glue. Give it a little twist. Looks like we shot some glue out there, which is just fine. I'll show you a trick my dad showed me. Um, cover it up with something like that and just wipe it off. It's almost as good as having a little cloth in hand at the time that you need to do that. Now if I wanted to get this little remainder bit off I would take some sandpaper and go along it. However, there are some times that I want to leave it there for a number of reasons and sometimes you can leave it there for a number of reasons like for example there's going to be leather tied on that and you won't see it. Um, but one of my main reasons for leaving it there is a lot of times I'll go ahead and glue the whole top surface of the, the block there for the fact that uh, it'll it'll basically cause a whole sheet of, of um, acrylic on top of that to form and it'll give it some extreme strength. Uh, in the case of our totems that have feet on them like the horses and the, the deer and the buffaloes and those kind of things that we have to glue onto a, a base, um, I always coat the top of the base 
with the cyan acrylic super glue so that they uh, you know they won't come off it, it gives them a lot more strength and makes it a lot easier anyway so I guess that's about it and uh, we've made a very unique very nice little flute totem and uh, once it's oiled and waxed it'll look really amazing this will be a great addition to either one of my own existing flutes or one that you know is going to go out on an order what have you um, the uh, eagle there could have been customized a great deal more I mean you could go back and with a wood burner burn feathers into it and you know do some distinction on his tail end and maybe get his face a little bit more accurate or what have you uh, there are a number of things that you could do however you do what it is that you want to do so this is where we are here on this guy I like the simple designs better myself for what this is I don't know if any of you have seen pictures of the old flutes and flute totems however they were very very simple in, in make and uh, you know I think this guy here turned out really good we'll post a picture of course of him after he's oiled and waxed so you can see what you're what you're up against there and uh, from that point like I say sky's the limit you can make any kind of totem using the procedures that we do uh, and of course not not too long for it to to be made either I think this guy would normally would have taken about 15 20 minutes Anyway, this is Charlie Montatoyella signing out for BlueBearFlutes.com. Uh, we thank you very much for watching our videos. We very much appreciate that. If you'd like to see more about how to make Native American flutes, we have a ton of videos on making and playing the Native American flute. We also have a book out, The Art of Native American Flute Making by Charlie Montatoyella and Jesse Montatoyella. Um, so we've got a lot of information out there on the web. Also, the schematics and design uh, for the silhouette of this little guy that we used is available for download uh, at no cost to you on our website of bluebearflutes.com. It's on the info page, I-N-F-O. You can find it at the very top. There's a link. And uh, just download it, print it out, put it on a piece of, uh, of material, and you can you could carve it out. Honestly, you can make this thing out of just about any type of material you want. They're a lot softer and easier to carve materials, balsa being one of them. Um, so there's a lot to consider, as I always say. Anyway, thank you guys very much. Please visit us. If you have any questions, shoot us a message on our website, bluebearflutes.com. Send it here on uh, YouTube. It's best to, uh, to post positive comments, if you would, please. We appreciate that. And subscribe to us if you're interested in this kind of thing. Uh, we do a lot of wood carving as well as making a flutes. So, you guys take care, and thanks so very much again.